This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Hi guys, welcome to Amateur Chemistry. So in this video, I will hopefully be finishing the incredibly long synthesis of cubate one 4 dicarboxylic acid methyl ester, or in short, the funny cube molecule which I started a long time ago, and after two videos only got the first half of it done. The second half however should be way less intense, and if I don't screw something up it should take much less time than the previous one, but taking into account everything that happened in the synthesis so far, and the weird reactions that I will have to carry out, I can't really be sure of that. I just hope that after all this struggle I will get at least a visible amount of the product to do some tests with, and without further ado, let's jump straight into the first reaction of this video, which is the deprotection of this abomination of a molecule that is the product of the two previous videos of struggle. It has two ketal groups that I installed in the first video to make the bromination happen correctly, they are also the reason why I call it the diketal, and now they have to go because they would just make the next steps more difficult. To remove them and create this second abomination that I will call the diketone because of these two ketone groups, I have to use some concentrated sulfuric acid and to start I pour 200ml of 96% sulfuric acid drink in there into a flask with a stir bar. I then cooled everything down in an ice bath because this reaction produces some heat, however it's not necessary to cool the acid down too much because the best temperature for this reaction is 20 to 25 degrees celsius, and everything much above or below that will probably make this whole thing go into the tar realm. Anyway, when everything was ready, I installed a funnel and a thermometer and started to add the diketal in small amounts over about half an hour. It slowly dissolved and reacted with the acid, the mixture also started getting very yellow, which indicated the start of the tarification process, but after what I went through in the past two episodes, this honestly doesn't bother me too much anymore. In terms of what's going on here, the diketal is slowly getting ripped apart by the sulfuric acid into the diketone and ethylene glycol, which then makes this whole thing become tar. Anyway, when I finished adding all the diketal, I removed the ice bath and left this thing to react for the night. When I came back, it had of course turned into black tar, and to separate my product from this, I now have to get it all into some cold water, so I set up a bowl with about a liter of distilled water, and cooled it down using a cold pack and some distilled water ice. I then started to slowly pour in the reaction mix, which instantly precipitated the product as this milky suspension, the water also got slightly warm because of all the sulfuric acid, and when I finished adding everything, I quickly vacuum filtered the whole mixture, leaving me with a lot of yellow pea water and some lightly brown product. Before purifying it, I have to dry it because despite being hydrophobic, it can hold on to a lot of water, and I will have to do it using a vacuum. However, before I start, I need to give a big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is an advanced all-in-one website creation platform designed to make entrepreneurs stand out and succeed online. Using it, you can create professional websites with ease, whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, and use them to sell anything from physical products to your time. Squarespace provides you with amazing features like their flexible website templates which allow you to easily make your website look really professional and add a variety of different features to it which I myself really like. Squarespace also provides you with the ability to use their powerful blogging tools which allow you to share everything from photos to stories to your site, as well as use their useful analytics tools designed to help you see every detail of your business. For a free trial, head to squarespace.com, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash amateurchemistry to save 10% off your first purchase. Ok, so to dry the diketone, I first have to transfer it into a flask, which turned out to be easier said than done. That's because even though I thoroughly dried it on the vacuum, it was still a thick paste, which was a pain to get into the flask, and I had to use a lot of water to get it all in there. This meant that I now had to remove even more water from this thing, so I decided to set up a DIY short path vacuum distillation apparatus and distill it off, but that didn't quite go as planned. For some reason, almost all of the diketal came over with the water, which was very bad. I was really worried that months of my work would go to waste, so I quickly saved as much of the diketal as I could by washing everything down with even more water. I then quickly vacuum filtered everything and got the whole filter into the oven at 70 degrees celsius for a few hours to initially dry the diketone and not repeat the same mistake. When I took it out it looked much better and had just the right consistency to go into the flask without any issues, and now with some more confidence I started lightly heating it and pulled the vacuum 
At first, the water was coming over just fine, but when I came back after leaving it overnight, I was just devastated. It turns out that my retarded heating mantle somehow went from 60 to 160 degrees Celsius, melting my product into these black tar chunks. I mean, I was just losing my yield for the dumbest reasons and this whole thing went from being an easy reaction to a freaking nightmare. To recover what little of my product I have left, I now have to recrystallize it using ethyl acetate, and to do that I first heated up some of it until it started to boil, and then added all of my product into it to dissolve it. The ethyl acetate along with a lot of other chemicals for the synthesis were provided by an online chemistry supply store, BM Chemistry. BM Chemistry sells a lot of hard to get reagents along with laboratory equipment and lots of other things, so you can check out their page to which there is a link in the description. Anyway, when everything had dissolved, I now wanted to clean my product from the black tar, and after watching the Chemiolis video, I wanted to try purifying it with activated carbon, so I added some of it into the mixture and let it do its thing for a few minutes. I then filtered everything through some cotton, and it turned out that the carbon didn't help at all. Fortunately, after the flask cooled down to room temperature, some crystals of presumably my product appeared on its sides, and to get more of them, I cooled everything down in a freezer and then vacuum filtered them out. They looked really bad, but at least indicated that there is hope in having an actual lead from this mess, and to recover more of them, I boiled down the filtrate, cooled it down in a freezer, and filtered out some more of the crystals. I then repeated this process a few times to get out as much as I could, and now I was left with some rather crude crystals of my product. They didn't look like much, but I was happy that I didn't screw up completely, and now I wanted to clean them, so I quickly recrystallized them using some more ethyl acetate and used some hex stains as an anti-solvent to get as much of them as I could. After this hell of a ride, I was left with some acceptably off-white crystals of my product, and when it comes to the yield, I managed to make 21.3 grams of the diketone, which corresponds to a percent yield of 41%, which is rather bad, considering that in the literature they managed to get 93%, but after all the accidents and struggles, it's good that I got any yield at all. I got 0.5 grams of the product into a vial for analysis, I also set the sample up for a crude melting point test, and this molecule is supposed to melt at 155 degrees Celsius, so I had to use an oil bath, and to this day I don't know why I made it so stupendously small, but it had done its job and confirmed that the thing I made is the diketone and not just some random crystallized star. Ok, now with the diketone ready, I can start what probably is the most feared reaction in this whole synthesis, and that is the photocatalyzed cycloaddition. It will turn my diketone into this weird cage-like compound, which will then be just one step away from the cubane, and it won't require any additional reagents, because all that it has to do is react these two double bonds on the ends of the diketone together, closing the structure. To get these double bonds to react, normally you would just need to heat them up or something, but here they are incredibly lazy, so I have to use something more obscure, which in this case is high energy light with a specific wavelength. Not long ago this reaction was done with a very expensive mercury vapor lamp, and its light didn't even go through glass, so you would have to build some kind of a flow reactor using special tubing, which is way too much work, but fortunately some very recent literature makes this step much easier. It employs the use of a photosensitizer, which in this case is my good old friend benzophenone, and it will allow for a different wavelength of UV light to be used, which just so happens to go through glass, and its emitters are much more accessible. Thanks to that, I was able to buy this chunky 100 watt array of 395 nanometer UV diodes, which would be just perfect for this, and to start setting up for the reaction, I first had to take care of the solvent. I could use something like dichloromethane, but it has a very low boiling point and since everything will be getting quite hot, I had to use a solvent called acetonitrile, which is hella expensive and I spent a fortune acquiring these 3 bottles of it. I measured out and added 650 milliliters of it into a 1 liter flask along with a stir bar. I then added in all of the diketone, followed by 5.96 grams of benzophenone and stirred everything to dissolve the solids, which left me with this slightly yellow solution. Before assembling the photoreactor, I wanted to take care of the cooling, because the UV LEDs will be warming up a lot, so I got this old computer fan along with a power supply and used my master electronic skills to join them together. I also yeah. wanted to use this nice RGB fan, but it didn't work for some reason. Anyway, now with the advanced cooling system ready, I can assemble the reactor. 
I first tried positioning the lamp under the flask, but it started getting very hot, so I got it onto the side on my good old lap support brick, which seemed to work much better. I also covered everything with tons of aluminum foil for maximum efficiency and started the reactor. Now, in terms of what's going on here, first the 395 nanometer high energy light hits the benzophenone molecules, which causes them to become angry, or in other words, enter a higher energy state, and they get rid of that anger by kicking the diketone molecules, giving them enough energy to snap in half and form the cage compound. The progress of the reaction is nicely indicated by how tarry it is, because there are a lot of side reactions going on making everything slowly turn into a pea-like liquid, and here you can see a few photos of how the reaction mix looks after different amounts of time, and it's easy to notice that it is turning more and more yellow. This whole reactor also looks kind of creepy in the dark, it also is constantly on the verge of collapsing because of all the aluminum foil, but what matters is that it's working, and for the reaction to complete, I left this thing running for 3 days. When I came back, I noticed that the mixture was constantly getting darker, meaning that it's not done yet, so I decided to get the whole setup onto my other desk and leave it running for another 2 weeks, and in the meantime I recorded the whole sulfuric acid video and checked on the reaction every day, it constantly got more and more yellow, finally ending up having this light brown color. When I felt that it looked good, I turned off and disassembled the reactor, leaving me with this slightly red solution, in which initially there was some black tar floating around, but it somehow disappeared after I turned off the UV. Anyway, now I have to get rid of all the acetonitrile, so I quickly set this thing up for distillation, which went pretty smoothly. At some point I noticed that a spider managed to make a web in my receiving flask, which was now getting flooded with acetonitrile, which I thought was kinda funny, when the distillation finished, I was left with this brown tar that should contain my product. I could theoretically try to insulate it, but I figured that there is no point in doing that, because I would definitely lose a lot of it, so now I have to proceed to the next reaction, in which I will finally be forming my cubane. To start, I poured 330 ml of distilled water into the flask containing my product, which didn't dissolve, but after shaking it, I managed to get it out to come loose. And now, to initiate the reaction, I added 85 grams of sodium hydroxide. Upon its addition, everything immediately turned black and got very hot, and to drive the reaction forward, I set this thing up for a reflux. The reaction going on here is known as a pseudo Favorsky rearrangement, and it strips off the last bromines from the molecule and extends one of the carbon atoms forward, forming a carboxylic acid and making the ring smaller, which when repeated on both sides of the molecule, forms the 1,4 cubane dicarboxylic acid that I have been after all this time. Anyway, I left this thing to run overnight, and when I came back it looked pretty much the same, and now I wanted to get rid of the benzophenone, which is still here after all this time, it should be insoluble in water, so I vacuum filtered everything, but it didn't seem like it was doing anything. That's probably because there was a tiny amount of acetonitrile still present dissolving the benzophenone, and I decided to not worry about it now and just proceed to the next step. I now have to separate my cubane diacid from this mixture, and it is currently in the form of its sodium salt, which makes it soluble in water, and to allow me to filter it out, I have to get rid of the sodium. To do that, I set up a beaker with around 200 ml of concentrated hydrochloric acid and added some ice into it to cool it down since this reaction will produce a lot of heat, and when everything was ready, I poured the entire cubane containing mixture into it, which resulted in this brown cubane dicarboxylic acid precipitate appearing. To make sure that I got all of it, I added some more acid, and now I had to vacuum filter everything, which took me only 9 hours. I mean, it was just ungodly slow, and I even had to get my vacuum pump outside to cool it down. When all the water came through, I now wanted to get rid of the benzophenone, so I again dissolved all the cubane in a solution of sodium hydroxide and filtered it out leaving behind the insoluble benzophenone. I then acidified it again to precipitate out the cubane diacid, and again filtered it which took another 9 hours and left me with some wet and brown cubane mud. I now have to dry it and I didn't want to repeat the vacuum incident, so I just dried it in the oven leaving me with around 11 grams of these brown chunks that look like dirt and it's kind of funny how it took me 4 months of work to make them. 
I am also pretty sure that they are actually the Cubane, because it is pretty much the only thing here that could react to acids and bases like that, and honestly I could stop everything here, but I wanted to purify this thing and maybe end up with some nice crystals. To do that I have to carry out the final reaction in this synthesis, which is a classic Fischer esterification, and it will make the Cubane less polar and in theory easier to purify. To start, I got all of my cubane chunks into a flask along with a steel bar and 430 ml of methanol, which will function both as the solvent and reagent here, and finally as the catalyst, I added 5 ml of concentrated hydrochloric acid and assembled a reflux. As I said, this reaction is a classic Fischer esterification, which makes a dimethyl ester of my cubane the carboxylic acid, making it much more soluble in organic solvents. Anyway, I left this thing to run overnight, and then I filtered the still hot mixture to remove this weird insoluble black stuff, leaving me with a black solution of my cubane, from which I quickly removed the solvent using distillation to end up with this cubane tar. Now to purify it, I have to carry out something called column chromatography, which I never did before, and I am afraid that I will screw it up, but I didn't want to finish this project with just cubane tar, so to start I first have to prepare something called an eluent. It will function as a solvent here, and I prepared it by mixing dichloromethane and methanol in a 95 to 5 ratio. The other component I need is some really fine silica gel, and I only have it in the form of these rather big balls. To get around that, I ground some of it using my old trusty coffee grinder, which worked better than I expected, and now with everything ready, I can set up the comb. I didn't have a piece of glassware specifically designed for this, so I decided to use this additional funnel, which in hindsight was way too narrow. I put some cotton on its bottom to keep all the silica gel in place and filled this thing up about two thirds of the way with the ground gel. I then wetted it with some of the eluent and dropped some acid washed sand on top. I then dissolved all of the cubane tar in the eluent and got it into the column. Its layer was unfortunately way too thick, but I just don't have a piece of glassware better than this small funnel for this. I applied some air pressure to make the cubane come through, and the idea here is that it would get separated from the black impurities thanks to the silica gel. It should in theory come over first, and be this nice light brown color like in the Chemiolis video, but here it was nearly black. It also didn't dissolve in methanol, which was really weird, and that made me a little worried about how will this turn out. You see, I am really confident that I made cubane here because pretty much every reaction went as it should, but at the last step I just screwed up, and to try and salvage the cubane I extracted it from the column and decided to try and just crystallize it out. To do that I boiled all of the eluent off and then tried to dissolve everything in some methanol, and while I was mostly successful, there was some insoluble tar left which just so happened to be the most perfect instance of tar that I have managed to create so far. Anyway, I then cooled everything except the tar in a freezer, and something did crystallize out as this brown powder. I also noticed that if you add water to the remaining solution, something else precipitates, so I filtered out that as well, leaving me with these two weird products plus some tar. Now, I don't know which one contains the cubane, maybe they both have it or it was in the tar all along, but I of course can't say that I made it without any real proof, so I will be taking these samples along with most of the intermediate products from the synthesis to be analyzed using NMR. This however will take a long time, so I decided to record another and this time final video on cubane in a few months, where I will go through the whole NMR analysis process, as well as try to nitrate the cubane if it is there. I will also try to just generally sum everything up and give you some more insight and advice on the synthesis if you would want to repeat it yourself. Anyway, this whole thing was a really interesting ride. I feel like I really expanded my skills when it comes to organic synthesis and have to thank you guys very much for your support, because even though these cubane videos don't get a lot of views and are really hard to make, as long as some people are interested in this kind of content, I will gladly continue making it. Also, thank you all very much for watching, I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did you can leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Also, as always, big thanks go to my Patreons, thank you very much for all your support and making crazy projects like this possible. If someone would also want to support my work and gain access to exclusive content, you can consider becoming a Patreon and see you guys in the next video.